Yeah, a lot of ill will at Augusta. Uh, the Masters is off and running. Let's talk about that situation. Uh, the whole storyline is Tiger Woods. I think it's it's sad. Uh, he's limping. He played only nine holes of practice rounds. He was limping on the course. Uh, he openly admits he's still got pain in the surgically repaired leg uh, from the aftermath of that horrible auto accident. Um, he was really struggling today. He bogeyed three of the first five holes, kind of shot himself out of it, tried to rally back, didn't do well. Uh, you know, the uh, leaderboard, I think, said Tiger finished at uh, two, two or three over way back. He was like eight shots back of the pacemakers. Wow. Uh, I'm not going to tell him that he should retire, but if you're on the course and everybody can see you're having all these physical woes and you can't play and you can't make the cut, what do you gain from being there? Go into retirement. You have your all your golf accolades. Go to the Champions Tour, the Senior Tour, if you still think you can play. So I'm kind of saddened to see that because when you watch him walk the course, you can see he's favoring it. And he openly admits, I don't know if I can walk 18 holes a day, much less walk 18 holes four days in a row if I happen to make the cut. And right now it does not look like he's going to make the cut. So that's, that's kind of a sad issue. Uh, the, some of the other storylines are out there. Uh, Greg Norman, not invited, not invited to the master's dinner, not invited to the master's ceremonies. You know, as a, a former number one ranked global star, you would think would lay down the guns because of the war with LIV and let him come. They did not invite him, which is kind of, that's kind of nasty. Uh, some guys are still really in grudge mode. And it's it's interesting to just just hear uh, what some of the other guys are saying. Freddie Couples, <coughs> excuse me, apologize for the cold. <laughs> Freddie right. Couples just continues to rant about the LIV. And Freddie Couples said before the the Champions Dinner, LIV, <coughs> you're paying Phil Mickelson two hundred million dollars to shoot seventy four and seventy five. Good luck to you. Mm. It just continues to dig about these guys who went there for the guaranteed money. And then out of nowhere comes a story in USA Today, Harold Varner, one of the younger guys who jumped to LIV last year. He has now confirmed that a number of players are negotiating to buy their way out of the Saudi contract to come back to the PGA Tour. Uh -huh. And he's kind of taken back because <laughs> it's like they're playing golf out there in another galaxy. Mm -hmm. They're not on anybody's radar. There's no relevance to the LIV. So the Dustin Johnsons of the world and the Cam Smiths of the world and all the guys that, you know, took the money are over there and nobody's paying attention. And Varner says he is, he is upset because the LIV people just seem to be in it to make money. And there's, there's really no grab that says this is going to be a great tour regardless of what Greg Norman said early on when they were trying to lure all these players there. And then you got Phil Mickelson, who's disappeared completely off the radar. And to me, that's really sad because I like him. He was the fans' man. Yeah, he was. Yeah. You can't make the cut. There's no cut on the LIV, but he's, I think his highest finish in LIV is 25th out of 46 players. And all the rest of the tournaments, he's 36th, he's 42nd, he's 48th. It's like the minute he got the money, his game totally disappeared on him. So I think there's there's an awful lot of sadness uh, about that. And, of course, the first round is, is still going on. Uh, Scotty Scheffler was fighting to try to get to the top of the leaderboard, which I don't think is going to be easy. Uh, he was two under, still out on the course. DJ was even par. Phil was uh, uh, minus two. Uh, on the course. So it, to me, it's, it's, there's been not a lot of conversation about PGA LIV in Augusta in the last couple of days, aside from what Varner said and what uh, Freddie Couples said. But the reality is nobody cares about this other tour. And these guys, yeah, they're getting to play in the Grand Slam events, but they're not even playing really great golf at this point in their careers, even though they're getting the big payday. So it's kind of messy right now. Uh, John Rahm had just an unbelievable day today. Uh, he had, he, you play golf you have, uh, on your scorecard. <laughs> yeah. If your scorecard has a lot of different colors on it, that's mm -hmm. not a good sign. No, no, no. John Rahm had five birds and an eagle 
and bogeys and double bogeys. He was all over the place. Wow. But he rallied back and he pushed himself into second place mm. uh, today, late in the first round. So it's four days. It's a wonderful tournament. It's just, it's a slice of Americana. But she's a, I hate all this other junk that is kind of wrapped around the Masters tournament. Yeah, it's interesting you said that some of the LIV guys are thinking of coming back. I was just talking with a fine wife last <coughs> night, and you know, and we're we don't like the fact that they're playing for you know these the Saudis who, you know, they had they had journalists killed, you know, in the Middle East, and it's you know it's it's called blood money. Yeah, so there's there's a lot of problems over there. But the reason that the players left to go to LIV was not only because they were making more money, but they wanted to. Uh, kind of forced change on the PGA to restructure how they did their payouts. And that happened. And it happened, exactly. So now I was wondering if some of those players were going to come back, but I guess they're under contract, so they have to buy themselves out? Yes. I mean, that that's going to be a lot of money. Well, true, but they've gotten a lot of money. Varner, Varner is one of the younger guys at the back end of the listing that said, yeah, there's a couple of us negotiating to buy our way out to come back to the PGA. Does not mean Dustin Johnson or Phil Mickelson or any of those marquee guys mm -hmm. are going to do it right at this point in time. So we'll see. We'll see what other storylines are out there. But uh, did you see the um, they, they, they did like a thing on Wednesday where it was uh, they were doing hole in ones. They had like one guy had back to back hole in ones. Part it, it was called part three shootout. Is that a common thing on Wednesdays before the Masters? No, it's, it, it, yeah, at Augusta it is. It's it a is special event day because I, I they don't normally do that at other no. tournaments, do they? Yeah. So I, that's why I was kind of surprised by it. And it was kind of kind of neat to see the guys hitting these hole in ones, but I guess it's just all about the pageantry of the Masters, right? And and getting the fans, you know, more events to to pay money for to see the mulberries and the azaleas. Oh, it's just it's like I say, it's a slice of Americana. Okay, before we start 